You're such an asshole! Hey, I had to charge up the old camcorder here because I looked at this and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a long one. So pour yourself a drink, pause it, go get a drink, you gotta need a drink. Or if you're smart, what you could do is you could download the video file and rip off the audio and you could just listen to this as a podcast, which I always do. Uh, not my own videos, but other people. Okay, we have a podcast. No, you don't. You have a YouTube channel, which inconveniences us that we have to download the video using an add-on extension to some third-party browser. And we dump it into some third-party editing so audio software, and then we have an MP3 we can listen to. All right, uh, a young man writes, I'm going to have to, like, anonymize this. I'm a 26-year-old white guy living at home with his parents in a place. Soon to change that situation in this new year. Currently, I work at a coffee place part-time as a supervisor for the benefits and another job selling things. I make pretty decent money and work about 40 to 45 hours a week, typically. Uh, back in September of last year, this new girl, who's a 21-year-old Persian, transfers to job number one and we begin to hit it off and flirting at work you don't shit where you eat and you're 26 you should know this we had a lot in common there was some definite sexual tension from the conversations but she said she had a boyfriend at the time however it was obvious that things weren't going well between them but you, dude seriously i would not I'm married and I have a boyfriend. If I had let that bother me, I would have not banged at least like a third of the chicks I did. Okay, more of the boyfriend. I think, have I ever slept with him? I must have. Maybe I didn't. Maybe by accident I'm actually moral, but with no intentions. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Shit. I'm not a homewrecker. All right. Anyway, uh, God, no one else going to bother me. I'm going to have to go through the list. Uh... Blah, 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 blah. Oh, and yeah, dude, you should know, boyfriend, just bang her anyway. Uh, one night we're, <clears throat> when we're closing together, she tells me they broke up and how we should go to that restaurant together. I told her I was too tired at the time, which I was, and how we should do it another night. And she says, I guess you don't like me anymore in a flirty man manner. So I ended up taking her out like like a fucking simp, like you felt. Look, if you're tired, just say, I, I, I gotta go. Because if the girl doesn't want to go out with you at that, then you know it's a game you don't want to get. That was your first test right there to find out whether this girl was sane or not. Whether there was going to be problems. And then based on the length of your email, problems ensued. Uh, <clears throat> later down the line, we go out on election day and we talk about politics ourselves. And I asked some questions about her past. I found out she lives with her mom, who isn't around much, and her younger sister. And that dad isn't around, isn't really around. Red flag. I found out from talking to her. Well, how come you didn't find this out like in the months that you were flirting with each other at work? I found out from talking to her she just got out of a four-year long, pretty dysfunctional relationship. Red flag. She's a pretty hard left winger and is down for socialism. Huge red flag. And I'm more of a libertarian. Red flag. However, she's a philosophy major. There's a problem. Student debt. And I got my college degree in philosophy. All right. So we're pretty open-minded. We can we so we can debate one another openly. I'm surprised she debates you and doesn't like accuse you of racism. Uh, I take her back to our place after dinner and drinks and we're sitting in my car leaning back in our seats and she's at a passenger seat next to me flirting it up and eventually I go in to kiss her and we start making out. She was really sensual from the get-go feeling up my chest and feel God this are you sure you're straight? I'm, I'm sorry dude I'm gonna guess you are like a hipster douche. Because you, you're you writing about emotions and this sounds like a fucking Harlequin romance novel. And then uh, we're going to get to the other part. This is the one that really, because when I skimmed it. Uh, she was really sensual from the get-go, feeling up my chest and feeling my heartbeat. To be honest here, it has been about two and a half years since I had last been with a chick, so I was pretty thirsty at this point. Yeah, I'm thinking you don't go to the gym and you have... Even though you don't go to the gym, you have a perfectly groomed beard and hair. And some really nice thick rimmed glasses, huh? To be honest, da, da, da. Uh, we make plans to hang out again and to keep it on the down low at work. I know. I now know why you can't dip your pen in the company ink. Okay, good. You're learning. <clears throat> you could have avoided this pain, but, but you're learning. Later on, after a few more days, she's already filling up my crotch. After a few more days, she's finally feeling up your cr- What? What is this, middle school? I got the cop a feel. It was under the sweatshirt, but outside of the bra, I think it had lace. 
And we're talking about having sex. <laughs> God, Jesus. I so undercharged you. <laughs> Jesus. And we make plans to get a hotel room. Banging in the backseat of a car isn't really my thing anymore, and I really wanted a more serious relationship, and now looking back on it, I was an idiot for thinking this girl was ready for such a relationship. Still, however, I asked her to be my girlfriend a week into it because she was pretty good about putting in a lot of effort on her part. Oh, I feel nauseous. When it came to having sex with her, I was reaching for the condom. She jumped on me and went to put it in without a condom. Red flag. How do you, how do you have such uh, uh, academic understanding of the red flags? How do you have this literal scientific academic understanding, but you don't play this out in the real world? You have, like, no intuition. You have no... You're 26. I understand you're going to make some fuck-ups, but you, you say, like, red flag, red flag, red You, you have the checklist, but the, then, like, a lot of people I know in the manosphere, it's like, you got this checklist. You're very good at reading articles. Oh, red flag. Yep, yep, yep. I see. I, I it. But then when it comes to the l practicing what you've learned in, in the classroom, you fumble the fucking ball. I talked to her, and apparently she had a spermicidal film. Me never having fucked a chick without a condom worked up the courage. Oh, yeah, you worked up the courage and fucked her without one. Eh, take one for the team, pal. <laughs> what do you do? Charge your beaches of Normandy? No. He jump out of a plane in a firefight? No. What do you do? He fucked a girl without a condom. Our hero. Um, after I busted my nut, I accidentally said, I love you. God, God, fucking hell. Is this real? Because you, you... Only a guy can accidentally say I love you. It was pretty stupid on my part. Luckily, it got out. I got out of this with no STDs and no pregnancies. At the time, my brain was so clouded with sex and love. I failed to accept any of these red flags. Okay. I hope, I hope the next half of this email is you getting pummeled by the real world. So pretty much a week after fucking... A week of fucking after... Work goes on. We're getting to know each other a little more at work and outside of work. And it was coming to Thanksgiving. And my mom was catching on to what was I was doing. So I convinced the girlfriend to come over for dinner with my family. And she's off of work. Probably should have waited a few months and not two weeks to introduce a girl to the family. Yeah, yeah I don't know. If the girl's cool. If you know how to screen a girl, which you didn't. Oh, well, tell me like you brought Psycho Girl over. Tell me she went ape shit. She's a vegan and the turkey was being served. Please tell me. Brush it away, da, da, da. But for some reason, my mom asked me if I wanted to bring her over, and I really wanted to. Everything was good. Got a blowjob upstairs after dinner. Dude, I don't need to know. Okay, look. Every time you have... It's not even a sexual conquest. Every time something sexual happens, you don't need to report. This is not middle school, okay? If you have a sexual conquest, like, I nailed this new chick. Ah, good for you, Bob. We don't need an update. Oh, by the way... Aaron, I, I got a blowjob. Oh, by the way, uh, last night we had to... By the way, she let me cop the feel inside the bra. We don't need that. Uh, the, 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 uh, having sex at your house with your parents, though, around is not something I want to be dealing with, though, and I aim to move out pronto now. However, Black Friday was really fucking dark, and this is where the honeymoon phase ends. <laughs> okay, here's where, here's where the shoe drops. We go out for drinks when she's off work on Black Friday. I told her on the first date I smoked pot here and there. Okay, you're a loser. You, you are a loser. You do know that. You are a fucking loser. No one's going to tell you that. They, oh, uh, uh, no, no. She could be crazy. You are also a loser. All right? Need to get a real fucking degree or a real fucking certification and a real fucking job. And you need to hit the gym. I'm just going to assume if you had had sex in two and a half uh, years. Uh, and you need to date a lot more girls because this pansy ass shit mentality will you date enough girls like yeah you can hang out with manly guys but don't worry date enough evil women out there that this kind nice sweet puke inducing sweet guy mentality will be playing kick the shit out of you and you become an angry misanthrope like us and you do pot uh, here and there and with her apparently honesty and trust is a big deal she had a big problem with him not being honest Go out for drinks. I told her first date I smoked pot here and there. 
And with her, apparently, honesty and trust is a big deal. She had a big problem with him not being honest about how much pot he was smoking. Red flags. This is your, her ex-boyfriend? I wanted to come clean about so I told her I still smoke pot every night to help me fall asleep. Oh, you fucking loser. Oh, I say, uh, you, 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 have, you, you could afford pot? I should have charged you way more. You live with your folks and you smoke pot every week. She blew up on this saying how I'm not honest with her and how she doesn't know if she can trust me. Okay, and, that, and now on intellectual honesty, that's bullshit there too because it shouldn't be shocking a 26-year-old with a philosophy degree and no fucking life smokes pot. All right, it shouldn't be that big of a deal, and it's not like you didn't tell her you said I don't smoke pot. And then she found out you did later, so now she's using what happened in her past to control, use control over you, so that you become a groveling simp, give her more money, give her more resources, allow her to have freedoms normal people wouldn't allow someone who they're dating have. I'm considering getting an Uber ride home because she doesn't want to talk to me much now, but I eventually get in the car with her. Were you writing pot when you, uh, were you smoking pot when you wrote this? Were you writing pot when you smoked this? Uh, she blew up on this saying how I'm not honest with her and how she doesn't know if she can trust me. I'm considering getting an Uber ride home because she doesn't want to talk to me much now, but I eventually get in the car with her and she's kind of buzzing off of the drinks we had. <laughs> pot bad. Alcohol and driving drunk, good. You understand why pretty much the rest of the country wants to, like, let California secede and we can, like, just invade and kill you all? Uh, then she tells me, I guess I haven't been straightforward with you about my dad and proceeds to tell me that she was sexually abused by her dad. I am 50-50 on that. Now, here's, here's, I just, because it's such a fuck up, I can't tell whether things are true or not in this world you live in. It could be. Could be your dad's a jerk, it, but but what are the chances she's just another millennial drama queen? I'm being deadly serious. I don't know. I mean, there's false rape accusations. I mean, the, the I'd like to know what the rape stats really are. You got to go to the police department. You can't go to the women's studies department. So I and this girl's majoring in philosophy. She's had the feminist studies that thing is shoved down her throat. She's a socialist. Well, I'm being deadly serious. You got to wonder if she's telling the truth. Um, late in the morning after a long discussion calming herself down she proceeds to try and give me a blowjob again oh we just skipped over the whole sexually abused dad thing by the way I was abused sexually by my dad <laughs> proceeds to tell me blah Late in the morning, I have a long discussion, calm yourself down. She proceeds to try and give me a blowjob again, but I realize I can't get off with this chick having the rough sex that I was having with her for the first time in my life. Oh, so you failed to mention to me that she can't have an orgasm because of sexual abuse with her dad. All right. Even though she grabbed you and practically raped you the first time. In a good way, I mean. For the first time in my life, I'm having erection problems with a chick from all this stress. Well, you're not having erection problems. You're just not attracted to her. I get a kick out of... Uh, no, <clears throat> there is... I'm sure medical proof that as men get older, they have performance issues. But I always wondered, and, and, and now I'm almost like 75% certain that 75% of the cases this might be. What if your wife just got fat and ugly? Huh? <laughs> you, the guy, your boy has got to be incentivized to stand up and salute at attention. And if you got some fat broad as you're getting older, she doesn't take care of herself. It's like, I'm wondering if you don't take some 25-year-old hot piece of ass and put it in front of a guy who has erection problems, if those erection problems don't go away, and he ain't got the guts to tell the wife that, eh, your fucking guts are too big, and I can't see your vag because your, your fatness hangs over. You look like Peter Griffin naked. So we got to lift that. Oh, there it is, and it's all moldy. And she's like, Jesus Christ. I can't imagine why you're having erection erection problems, dude. And, and in that case, it's uh, uh, physical. In your case, it's, it's uh, uh, psychological. I mean, I've had girls talk me out of wanting to bang them. Like, it's hard. It's hard to do. <laughs> but women have uttered the magic words that were so stupid, so dumb, that my genetics, I mean, at, at the base, what's happening is like, you know what? I'm a pretty smart fucking guy. And my genes are pretty fucking smart. My sperm are pretty fucking smart. I don't care how stupid she is. As long as she's hot, I'll be able to train my boy or my daughter to overcome her stupid genes. And then, then sometimes women open their mouths and you're like, I don't care how smart 
my sperm is or how great a swimmer is they, they are not overcome they're not going to overcome that level of stupidity and you're you just go and it doesn't mean you're dysfunctional that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you it means you're actually very smart and very functional and you're unconscious instinctual j instincts are kicking and saying we do not want to procreate with that fuck no if the kid came out it have three nostrils and ear and and it looked like a cyclops uh fuck no that that's perfectly fine because this is a dangerous person so you don't i don't believe you have sexual problems do you, go look at some porn okay see if you get an erection well, i guess you've been looking at porn since you were 12 because you're 26 all right find another hot chick you want to bang and see if you don't get an erection then Ah, uh, but, 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 but for the first time you ever da, 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 da. completely broke my warrior spirit in bed having to hear what she told me, dude. Yeah, I don't, I don't know any guy that could get it up when a girl just told you that. Oh yeah, by the way, my dad fucked me, and like, wait, it's worse than watching a line drive hit the third baseman in the nuts. I mean, it's just like you just, yeah, you're not thinking. Oh, let's fuck now. Um. Uh, she ends up dropping me off at my place around five. I tell her I need time to think. I get back, and I'm pretty emotionally distraught. <laughs> oh, you just know, it's an emotional millennial. By what I've been told and how she acted tonight, my mom wakes, uh, my mom wakes up and comes down to check on what I'm doing. I tell her we got into an argument and that she took me to a dark place tonight. My mom instantly asked me was she sexually abused in a firm manner. My, your mom probably identified something you didn't. I don't know. What it is about moms where they're pretty intuitive about things? Or it could be the knife cutting that your girlfriend has, or the multiple hair colors, or the piercing in the nose or the tongue. I, I don't know if she has these things. I'm just going to go out on a wild branch and assume. Uh, like any son, I suck at lying to my mom. She proceeds to warn me about moving as fast as I am with someone like this, but working with the chick on a day-to-day -day basis pretty much makes it hard to slow down. My mom used to be a counselor for pregnant teenagers and sexually abused women, and she told me that these women carry their trauma with them their entire lives. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how you get rid of it. Uh, I'd like to believe my ex overcame it like she said. She No, no, you don't get over it. No, no, dude, you don't get over that. You don't get over the good things. You don't get over the bad things. Like you, you, Your past is what has formed you. You are a product of your past. Uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Uh, she said, but I don't think she could stop going to counseling just yet. Oh, so she's going to counseling. I practically called it off the next day, but I stuck around after a long phone call because I really didn't want to see her as a victim. It was just really hard for me to choke her, pull her hair, etc., and have the rough sex I was having with her because in my mind I was re-victimizing her. Should I have felt bad here because now that's how I'm feeling? Oh, God. This is what happens when you're brought up by women and there's no father in your life. Um, you're not... Look, for all the bad things that have happened to this girl, we're going to answer this question because Lord knows how many other questions you have. For all the bad things that have happened to this girl, she is an adult, she has agency, she's illegal, blah, 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 you can have sex. And if you want to go... And, and I won't lie to you, the girls that are most fucked in the head, typically, though not always, are the most awesome in bed. So you got to stop... It, with this millennial pussy, you are there to serve other people bullshit, okay? And only if you feel yeah. Bad shit have happened to bad people, or bad shit has happened to good people in the world, okay? Bad things happen. And now, the one good thing that you're getting out of this, which is crazy, awesome sex, you're actually getting laid now, now you feel guilty. However, all that being said, yeah, I can totally understand that if you're not into it anymore because she was sexually abused by your dad because of the genetic and instinctual and other reasons. Um, but if, right now, you, if you're having all these, you can't, you can't be continuing on with this girl sexually or any other way. And, and if you're feeling bad, well, there's, there's a sign, pal. You know, don't do it. All right, pretty much one week... <sighs> This is like a middle school journal. Like, you're, you're chronicling, you just don't get to the fucking point. Pretty much one more week goes by after this, and my libido is pretty shot. I'm stressed and sad by this, and I should have picked up on all the daddy issues sooner. No, you shouldn't have. You don't know this shit. No guy knows it. I'm really trying to look past the whole sexual abuse. Uh, doesn't help. My dog died a few days ago after hearing this stuff. We get a hotel room and have sex. But the following attempts, I can't keep it up for her, and it gives me performance anxiety in the following attempts. I need a week off from sex with this chick to really get out. You're probably driving her nuts. She probably wants it more. 
if I felt pressured to perform. We would make out all the time in the back room and work, and she would grab my dick, but I just couldn't get hard for it. One night we had sex in the bathroom, and again, my dick just couldn't stay hard. I told her I just can't relax and enjoy sex in the bathroom, back room, but it was also my mind telling me I can't have rough sex with this chick until I'm comfortable. Again, we're going to take a break. Hang on, guys. Only three more paragraphs. On the last day together, she studied for her final exam. I go to pick her up from studying and give her a break because I really put my heart into this with this girl. You have no other life, do you? You invested in, you had all these red flags and you still hooked your, you hooked your boat or hooked your sails to this boat. Uh, with this girl who really asked it of me. However, when culling in the car, her insecurities came up and saying how oh, she doesn't want me to pity fuck her. Ooh, she read you good. I didn't have too much time to hang with her because I had to drive to work and told her if it's okay if we don't have sex right now, but I'm not here to pity fuck you and drove off all work to work all pissed. Later on that night, she comes over to my soul under charge. You, dude, you do not know how to get to the fucking point. Comes over to my place and we're watching Netflix and ended up having sex for the final time. After we do it and the movie ends and I'm about to fall asleep with her in my arms, she brings out how she doesn't trust me. How oh, this shit again. This really threw me off. We ended up arguing again. I was drinking whiskey after she left and I called her around 5 to 6 a.m. way past the time I'd like to be asleep. End up telling her about my concerns of her past with her dad. I told her how I researched childhood sexual abuse and how it affects adults in life. She told me she never felt so judged and wanted to end it. So I told her that my mom, so I told her that my mom, because of her prior work experiences, was able to pick up on your past and that she could see the pain in your eyes. This, this, bro. I am so glad I had a vasectomy. Uh, she told me my trust is forever broken because my mom picked up on these things and proceeded to give an example of what if I had a miscarriage down the line and I didn't want your family to know. She doesn't have the same family life that I do, so she can't relate to being open with your parents or coming to them for advice on certain life issues. I probably shouldn't have told her these things, but in our relationship, she is really stressed, honesty, trust, and openness. I had never been so pressured in my life to give my rap sheet to a girl. Unfortunately, now I have to see her at work. Oh, you learn why you don't shit where you eat, huh? I have three videos of this. Don't fuck girls at work. Are you coming to me with your... You better be asking for a solution after this fucking bullshit or this is just a whiny crying sob fest. Fortunately, now I have to see her at work for a couple more weeks until she starts a new job. All right, you're lucky. She's leaving and she's not suing you for rape or anything. I'm currently down on myself for putting so much of my emotional energy in a girl like that so fast after trying to make things work with her. Okay, the reason you did that is because you are a loser and you have nothing else to do in life. Okay? Let's, let's, look, let's inventory where you have problems. And there's certainly other problems that are not your fault. But you got into this. Because you are a loser, all right? Unless you started coming up, unless you, oh, by the way, I, I started a dot-com or I started a, a, a repair company. I just work here at this place for fun, right? You're a fucking loser. You're a goddamn typical barista philosophy major living at fucking home loser. And you have nothing else in life. So anything looks good, even if, innocent as she may be, this veritable shit show and, and red-flagged woman with sirens going off, brant, 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 and you actually think, well, I got nothing else to do but stick my dick in this. So your goal from here on out is to stop being a loser. How do I stop being a loser, Aaron? Read Reconnaissance Man, then read Worthless, then read Bachelor Pad Economics. All right? Read those three books. Read Gorilla Mindset. That's another one. Read any of the Bang books. I'd, I'd recommend Dead Bat and Paraguay by Roosh. Read uh, Pushing Rubber Downhill. Read all of them. And then you'll have an idea of what being a man is, what being a human is, what being successful is, and what life is all about. But right now, you have swallowed whole what the leftist socialist teachers told you in, in uh, California. Your mom, who I think, Ray, I don't know where your dad is. Are you a small... What? Christ. 
You have to have something else going on in your life. You have to have a reason and value unto yourself. Otherwise, you will have your best option will be what just happened to you and this shit show. And this will continue to happen and you will never make any progress or advancement in life. Uh, I really do want to think she's overcome these issues, but it's hard for me to accept. No, she hasn't. She's not your problem. I'm keeping it cool at work when she's around, but there's definitely an awkwardness about everything. You think so? A few days after we ended things, she texted me about covering her shift. I didn't respond because I don't like to keep in contact with exes after a breakup and get strung along into a friend zone. Well, you're not going to have anything to do with this girl anymore. And she blew up later that night telling me how she's judging me from my actions and not my words when I say I want the best for her and to be happy after we broke up. <laughs> few days after not really talking much, she calls me at 2 a.m. to ask me a question about what I told her grand about what I told her my grandpa said. I'm not really a racist. No, what does race come into this? I'm not really a racist, nor is anyone in my family. But I felt compelled to make it known to her that not everyone in my family is PC. My grandpa once said, it's hard to love a Muslim when you're on an airplane. That's good. <laughs> That's funny. It wasn't my comment, but I think she didn't like hearing it, being a lefty socialist. Yeah, and she's going to go immediately into the victim game. And she's going to immediately try and be the victim. Oh, you're a racist. You hate Even though you're dating her, uh, she's going to hold you responsible for the actions of others. I'm sure, as you can tell, I've been kind of obsessing over this whole outcome, but any advice would be appreciated. Keep your head down and wait for her to get her other job. Pray to God she doesn't file a sexual harassment complaint against you. Don't do this stupid shit again. Take inventory of your own life. Dude, go get fucking professional help. I'm just the older brother that yells at you and tells you what an idiot that you truly are. And you certainly need that. That's lacking in this world. That's why I have so consulting so successful. But dude, your pot, your fucking background, your fucking loserness, go and, and this experience you've just dealt with this girl, uh, you need to talk to her. You, you should talk to your mom and your mom's biased, but what your mom will tell you if you go to your mom and say, hey, maybe I, I need to go talk to a therapist and get my act together. Uh, your mom will have, definitely know the resources. She, your mom, she seems to love you. Your mom will definitely have the resources and, and, and the places that you, you know, she can recommend you go. Uh, but I, I don't do that schizo, bipolar, social anxiety, all that other stuff. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, when it comes to the world of finances and common sense, yeah, I can, I can handle it. But when it comes to this, oh, I just feel emotional, and you just ran into a girl that was sexually abused by your dad, yeah, you might want to go talk to a pro. You might want to talk to somebody. So go talk to your mom, find out if she recommends someone. Uh, I just need to get back on with my life. I kind of lost myself here in the fast lane relationship with no downtime in between seeing one another. Otherwise, it's a three-week experience and your life is over. My self-esteem wasn't always that great, but I've lost a significant amount of weight this past year and started dressing nicer for the new job, resulting in girls showing more interest in me lately. I just had too much crazy sex with her like I compared to other girls I've had flings with, never done a one-night stand. I think the whole sex without a condom thing and her telling me come inside me one night in the backseat of my car really fucked with how much my heart was invested in this. You do not have any older brothers, do you? Let me know how foolish and naive I was. I think you... You are in the top three asshole consulting clients of foolish and naivete. I... Because... You, you, you are so plainly and obviously fucking up, but you are so clueless either in how you've been raised or been indoctrinated in the schools and the pot and the booze. You don't know how fucked up you are. Uh, but yeah, you're tremendously foolish and naive. And how much it will cost for a response? Hope the email wasn't too long. Oh, it was horrendously too long. Absolutely too long. Uh, dude, I don't know what your problem is, but you, you definitely could stand again to go talk to a therapist. Um, I don't know if it's the pot or what, if you were writing this when you were high, but you lack context. You don't, you, you don't, you're tone deaf. You don't realize how long things should be. You lack situational awareness. And the fact that a crazy girl, who through no fault of her own, assuming that she was truthful about being sexually abused by her dad, that this has thrown you for this much of a loop, and you are stupid enough to date at work, 
yeah, you, you need more help than what I can give you. All right? I could point you in the right direction on some things. But, yeah, definitely talk to your mom and go get some help. Uh, and uh, whereas there's, there's things that, you know, obviously, you, know, you might have a psychological issue. Or maybe it's just, you know, this is a traumatic experience. This is just something you got to get over. But I could tell you for 100% sure, stop fucking up your life with the pot, your stupid fucking degrees, and get a fucking plan together. That's the realm I can help you in. This other stuff, man, you gotta go. You gotta date a lot more and you gotta get your shit together.